I want to end off this first part of this program by telling you, you know, the globe today, we are facing challenges where so many ideas, so many ideas are floating around online and on the net. And so many ideas, some of them are good ideas and a lot of them are just a waste of time. Many of them would lead us astray completely. It's up to you to pick up what is beneficial and what is not. You know, you see a video that is totally fake, totally fake. And you get so excited and pretend like it's so true. And by you believing it's true, you want to actually wipe out one whole category of society. And later on, when it's too late, you find out that was a fake. Have you ever come across something called deep fake videos? Google it, search it, check it and look what it's all about. It's possible. Be careful. There is too much happening now. And our children are exposed to much more than we were exposed. You are exposed to more than what I am exposed to or was exposed to. And our fathers were exposed to less. Communications have become such that you can be conned. Wallahi, I had a problem of a guy who was... I'm going to tell you what it is because it's a problem, right? He was on a video with his girlfriend where they were both naked, nude, videoing each other, doing whatever. And you know what? Some time later, he found out that that was not even a woman. It was a 70 year old man. And how he did it, only Allah knows. And a little while later, he told me that I now have a threat against me that I'm going to release these videos onto a porn site. Subhanallah, I know, you know, people get excited to video themselves in the nude. I'm going to say this because we have to talk about it. I know religious scholars don't normally talk about this, do they? We have to, we have to, we have to, we have to tackle the bull by the horns. Nobody's going to talk about it if we don't in the correct way. Don't get excited. I tell you why, your phone, go and ask anyone who knows about phones. I was told this by someone who works with intelligence in one country. He said, listen, anything you've ever done on your phone is retrievable. Whether you've restored factory settings, you've gone back, you've done, don't think it's not hackable. They can tell you end to end encryption, this, that for every technology, there is a counter technology. Do not be fooled. Subhanallah, switch off your phone. It will still hear you if it wants to and do whatever you want. It will still do that. Subhanallah. So he said, when you, I said this a few days ago, I'm saying it again. He says, when you're done with your phone, the best way of getting rid of it is to put it on the ground, a concrete, take a 14 pound hammer and knock it done. I said, I don't need to do that. He said, well, watch out. Why? I said, I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. You're not going to find a nude video on my phone. You're not going to find things here. So I've got nothing to hide. You can take the phone. It's okay. But my brothers and sisters, remember something. You might be on your own. Don't do something with your phone that you would be embarrassed the day the whole world found out what there was there. It's a piece of advice from a figure. Call me an elder brother in the case of some and a father figure in the case of a lot of you. By the way, I have 10 children. Two of them are married. Alhamdulillah. I see some of the boys are looking. Is it? Yes. <laughs> and by the way, I have eight daughters. So you better be good to me. Mashallah. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I tell you, don't do that which is embarrassing with your phone. If you're having a video call, keep it proper. Even if tomorrow there is a spouse on the other side, people ask fatwas. Look, my wife is far away. You know, I am far away. Can we have a nude video call? You know, and I will tell them from a religious perspective, you know, the, the aura, obviously, there is an element of respect. But they, although there may be permissibility because the two of you are married, but you know what? There could be a third party and there probably is in a lot of cases a third party somehow, somewhere there was going to get involved and you might just find that video one day somewhere. A person will tell you, I saw it on a porn site. It happened. Wallahi, it has happened. 
I promise you, there was a sister who told me, you know, my video is on a porn site and this is what, and how do we, people become suicidal. Be careful. This is a reality. It is a problem many people don't discuss. You will pay the price of it. Just learn to hold back a little bit. You know, you want to do things. Not everything needs to happen with the phone. You don't have to record every single moment of yours. The intimate moments, keep them as a memory in your mind. Subhanallah. The sister says, what do I do? It's on the porn site. I said, sister, how do you know it's on the porn site? Good question, right? She said, you know what? My brother found it there. <laughs> Wallahi, I'm not joking with you. And what was the brother doing? Well, he's hooked onto porn. Imagine what people are going through. And Wallahi, how do you counsel such a person? I recently read an article of people who were compensated large sums of money because of something similar to this nature. They were conned into something. But at the same time, we as Muslimin, let's carry ourselves with respect. Don't do things that will be an embarrassment. You notice this evening we spoke of challenges, challenges we're facing as a Muslim ummah. Challenges we're facing with the wars that are going on around us and how we should learn lessons and how we should try by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ensure that we are saved at least to begin with. And then we also learned a little bit about our social life to make sure that we try and deal with those challenges too. I've said quite a bit.